Hello everyone, um, my name is Camelia. I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, also known as the PMHMP, um, also a nursing and mental health enthusiast. And I am getting on here for the very last video. Um, I've done um, quite a few videos, I think about six total, um, that have been specific to performing a psychiatric interview. Um, my goal has been to chunk information in sections um, so that uh, anyone who is um, a PMHMP or an FNP or your PMHMP student, or you are um, endeavoring to uh, enter the world um, of psychiatry or mental health, um, it's just been to chunk information to get very specific on questions that you should be asking and some of the why behind those questions. Um, so I've done six videos up until now. We've talked about the chief complaint and introduction. We've talked about the patient's psychiatric history. We've talked about uh, the patient's uh, family history as it pertains to, to psychiatry and mental health. We've talked about medical history, social history, um, and the very last video talked about substance, um, substance use. And now I want to kind of come forward, which is how I actually go through my interview with the patient and talk about more of the here and now. So we started with the chief complaint. We went through the uh, trajectory for history, obtained that from the patient, and now we're back to kind of the here and now. So what's going on with the patient now? After I get as much history as possible, um, I do actually go forward and talk about um, I actually restate what the patient mentioned to me about what's been going on with them. Um, this is also a time, um, and first of all, restating means just um, going back and telling the patient or um, telling them back what they said to you in terms of what they've been experiencing. Um, that also helps to clarify anything. Um, and if it feels like something is missing, um, or anything hasn't been addressed, that's also an opportunity that, that I give the patient to discuss anything further, okay? So this is really about guiding the patient um, to answer the questions, but also get to a point where you're able to show the patient and demonstrate that you actually understand what they're saying, what their symptoms have been, what concerns they've had, and that helps to get you closer to a treatment plan. Um, so restating is very important. Um, I also do a lot of education. Um, so what's important about the PMHMP role is that you're never going to get away from educating the patient. Um, that is specific to the role. It's very important and patients really do appreciate it. So all of those metrics that they typically complete before the visits, um, sometimes this is given to a patient online, other times it's given to them in the office before they come back to see you. Um, those metrics are things like a PHQ-9, which is a patient health questionnaire that's specific for depression, um, a GAD-7, which is a scale specific for anxiety. Um, there's an ISI scale, there's a mood disorder questionnaire um, that would be screening for things like bipolar disorder. There's an ASRS or an adult self-report scale that would be specific for symptoms um, around ADHD. And then we also have, um, in addition to that, we've got um, things like the CAGE screening um, and things that you would typically ask the patient um, as you get to those different areas. Um, but the general metrics or the scales that we have patients to complete beforehand, that's where I actually revisit those at this point. Um, it also helps to really drive, drive in um, the specifics around diagnosis for patients. So I do actually go through those, those metrics with them, let them know that on the PHQ-9 or the GAD-7, this is what your score is, you know, GAD-7 out of 21, um, your PHQ-9 score out of 30. Um, I do let them know kind of where they fall. Um, we do, I do uh, specifically mention symptoms around the things like depression, anxiety. Um, I do question patients if they're higher on the mood disorder questionnaire. Um, I screen um, and ask questions about depression, but I also screen and ask questions about um, hypomania and mania. Um, so very, very important um, so that you don't miss anything with the patient. The ISI is very specific to sleep. Um, but again, this is really important, guys, so that you can really focus in on an individualized treatment plan. 
Um, at this point, um, I also give patients the opportunity um, to ask questions, uh, to add in anything that um, would be specific to what we're talking about, particularly after the education is provided. And that's where I actually, you know, let patients know that your symptoms are consistent with, and then we talk about a diagnosis, and then at that point we come up with a treatment plan. Um, what is important about this, guys, is that you have enough information that you feel comfortable with being able to provide a diagnosis and or a treatment plan. Um, sometimes your treatment looks like um, looking at things over more time. Sometimes you need more time to see the patient and get more history before you just decide on a treatment plan with the patient. Other times you may need to refer the patient out to uh, possibly a, a specialist, uh, for example, neurology or the primary care doctor um, to get additional lab testing um, and or additional evaluation to be sure that there is nothing that's overlapping with what you're seeing in the office. So that is a part of the treatment plan. Um, but what's important here, guys, is that you really feel like you have enough information. Um, this way that I've been able to go through on the video series is really what I do for each patient unless I'm guided to do something different. Um, this is not a cookie cutter, you know, a way to do an interview. Um, sometimes you do have to navigate other areas before you get to specific information. Other times you just go with what the patient is guiding you to, you know, get more information at that time. Um, but I've been able to get through this uh, general process for most patients. I can get through an interview um, within 30 to 45 minutes for an initial visit. Um, 30 is a stretch for any patient, um, but it, this process allows me to be efficient enough to get through the process and get more information. And for those that I can't do that with, um, sometimes, you know, we, it does require 60 minute visits. 45 to 60 minutes is actually an average um, for an initial visit. And that does require, that does allow you to get the required information. Um, but I've been able to do this, you know, um, over some time and I've really tweaked this uh, to get to this process that, that is working for me as of right now. Does it work for every patient? No, but it works for most of the patients where I'm able to get the information that's needed, again, to develop the best treatment plan for the patient, okay? Um, you guys may have um, had any other things that have come up that you felt have been more helpful for you um, as you've gone through the process of interviewing a patient. Um, I will plan to do possibly a mock interview that will put all of this together at some point, um, but this is the final video for the series. Um, and if you guys have other things that you'd like to add um, that you want me to specify or get more uh, specific on, um, and or things that you found that have worked better for you, please share here in this community. Um, this is about us all learning and growing together, so I'm always open to any feedback. Um, I'm hopeful that this series has been helpful to uh, some of you, um, but please ask me any questions that um, come up and feel free to continue to stay engaged here. Thank you.